Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm Beebs Kelly. Thank you so much for being here with me. Today, I have a special treat. I've brought on a special guest. We are covering some of Meghan Markle's worst outfits of all time. So as a special treat today, I have Jen from Real Housewives Recaps. If you missed it, I was in a video of hers. I will be sure to link it, and it'll also be linked in the description, so be sure to go back and watch that because we have a plethora of Meghan Markle disasters in that video. But today we are talking more disasters over here on my channel. Hi, I'm just so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. You're wonderful, and I love your videos so much. Thank you so much. The feeling is mutual. I absolutely love your channel. Tell everybody Thanks. where where to go subscribe. So I'm Real Housewives Recaps. Again, I'm Jen. And I always get the question, why don't you show yourself? I just don't. I just talk over pictures and stuff. So that's why you hear my voice and you don't see me. But uh, yeah, I've been covering the... I mean, I've been covering the royal family, but mostly Harry and Meghan stuff for about a year. But before that, I recap shows, hence the name. But now I'm obsessed with this stuff, and I'm so excited to be here and talk about this with you. Awesome. And what got you uh, interested in the uh, the Harry and Meghan saga in the first place? Well, I've always been a huge fan of Queen Elizabeth and, of course, Catherine, Princess of Wales, huge fan. So when, honestly, what got me interested is when... Megan did that interview in South Africa where she talked about, I don't want to go too dark, but she talked about nobody's asked how I'm doing and made it about herself in a place where people are truly struggling. There's, you know, known issues to women and she's actually near, I believe, a women and children's center telling the interviewer, nobody's asked about me. What? <laughs> Who is this? What's happening? And it just felt like, oh my God, I've got to talk about this stuff. So, I mean, I didn't talk about it then, but I started taking notice of how crazy this is. And so I've kind of been taking mental notes. And then I think it was around the time I, the Oprah interview, something like that, that I was talking about. I was talking about on the channel. I was like, we've got to discuss this. This is nuts. Everybody else can clearly see that this is crazy, right? Well, before we get into the clothes, do you have anything coming up on your channel? Oh, thanks. Oh, gosh. So I'm I'm usually working on more like news. So it really depends on what news is coming out. Um, I did recently get the chance to interview Thomas Markle Jr. And he was such a nice guy. And I enjoyed talking to him. That was nice. And um, but I do all kinds of stuff. It's It's usually more news related, but I do get into the fashion stuff on my channel as well. So you can definitely check out because I, I, if you're here for the fashion, I definitely get into like, as I call it, messy. So I have all kinds of stuff. I, I put up a million videos a day. So awesome. All right. Well, then let's get into the fashion. So first up, we have the puddle of pants that she wore to Wimbledon. It's this blue striped top that's clearly too large and then these white pants that are clearly way too large and way too long that are literally puddling on the ground what do you have to say about it oh my goodness so much first of all thank you so much for having me on your channel i love your channel i'm so excited and if you guys didn't see it we did another part of this video over on my channel real housewives recaps definitely check that out but I'm just so excited that you brought up these pants because I hate them. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, they were married in May and then she wore these in July. So this was not long after the wedding. Serena Williams was playing. It was a women's final. Day 12 of Wimbledon. None of that matters. She looks insane. What is going on with these pants? Yeah, I mean, the wearing a lighter color on the bottom would have been nice for her because she has a broader upper body. So that would have brought balance. But when you do it wrong like this, where it's just so much fabric puddling up on the ground, it looks horrible. It ruins the whole effect. And her shirt, honestly, should have just been tailored a little bit better because when you also you're wearing a big voluminous shirt, then you're also kind of taking away from that. So she kind of took what could have been okay and completely ruined it by having volume in the top and way too much fabric at the bottom of those pants. It's just awful, awful. I don't understand how she was able to walk in these pants. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and she we know she wears shoes too big too, so it must have been an absolute nightmare. That's probably part of why she always looks so awkward when a picture gets oh. caught of her, that uh, when a picture snapped, she almost always looks a bit awkward or like floppy hands or something is going wrong in her pictures. And it's probably in large part due to these 
way too huge shoes, making it impossible for her to just have a normal posture. I think the floppy hand has to do with the, look at my jewelry. She loves to show off the wedding ring, the watch, all of it. it makes such a good point. You know, I was so stuck on these stupid pants that I really didn't even think about that the shirt is, is also so voluminous because I'm just <laughs> stuck on these pants. So you're right. It gives her a square shape. And, and when you're broad shouldered like that, I just don't understand why you would want you don't want a square shape. Why do you think she wears her pants like this? I mean, she clearly you can tell that they're too big. I mean, too big on the bottom. Do you think it's too? All I can think is, is she trying to appear like, look how thin she is swimming in her pants. Is it something like that? You think? I mean, with Megan, it's always a mystery. It could be, it could be that, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think that's, since they are in style, you know, and perhaps she has freebies sent, as we know has been controversial in the past. I'm really not sure. A lot of people think she resells, so she doesn't want to have them hemmed. But it, it, it matters not. If you don't want to look like this, you need to have them hemmed. As we talked about on your channel, that actually slightly wider leg pants are better for her than skin tight or skinny pants because she has that broader upper body and very long thin limbs. So when she wears skinny jeans or skinny pants, it really just kind of accentuates that discrepancy. So when she wears pants that do have more room in them, like these straight leg trousers, it looks a lot more balanced, but this is taking it just too far in the other direction, you know, overcorrecting, <laughs> if you will. It's it not working. Messy. It does, yeah. especially messy. when they are literally puddling on the ground, you right. will fall. It's a sporting event. So you're going to be, I mean, you can see they're in different turf and different, Every it just it just doesn't make any sense. They're gonna get dirty. It, yeah, I have no I have no words for this. I, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> Again, this was okay. This was a, a not. I mean, not that the fashion ever improved, but this was early on. I would say, I guess, because they had just gotten married. But her thoughts were, I need to go expensive, check, and I need something sporty. So she went Ralph Lauren and thought, well, then that's all I need. But then <laughs> neglected. Oh yeah, they need to actually fit and look like pants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And when you look at like the shirt having so much room in it, and then all of a sudden these really, you know, fitted at the hip pants, and then they're super huge down at the bottom, it's just very jarring to, yeah. to the eye. It does not work well. I think if she had worn these pants, even though they're way too long, the silhouette would have been nicer if she had a fitted top on, something that was, you know, not too tight, but just right, you know, something yes. simple. And even her hat has a black band on it. And then she has this blue striped top. So maybe she just worn something with like a black pattern, black and white patterned top or something that wasn't all this room and fabric billowing out. It would have been much better silhouette overall. She's really bad at, I mean, a lot of uh, every event, but Wimbledon, because again, we talked about the horrible mismatched outfits she wore to Wimbledon, what, the year after this, I believe. So, oh. Wimbledon features some of Catherine Princess of Wales's best looks and some of hey. Meghan's worst looks. Take this a step further and go psychological. Think about this. Catherine is patron over racket sport. I forget the official names, but I mean, over racket events such as Wimbledon. So she's there to make an impression, to have the thoughtful details. She wears a little bow. So it just, it makes it even worse. That messy, that I almost called her messy. The messy doesn't give a crap, right? <laughs> so next up is one of my least favorite looks from Meghan Markle. And I call it the cookie cutter bra situation. But you have an even better name for this look. I call this the I'm a business lady. Look at me dress. It's so <laughs> bad. It's so I'm so glad you have strong opinions about it because so do I. The gray boobs dress. Yes. Yes. It's the worst. In no scenario do you want a cookie cutter of your bra visible in your dress, especially for something where you're supposed to be professional. When I first saw this, I was gobsmacked. Yes. So bad. So I did pull the stats if you're interested. It's a Roland Murray dress. Uh, it was for Ireland, a meeting in Ireland. This dress costs $2,689. 
paired with some Paul Andrews shoes for $848. What do you think is going through her mind with this dress? There's so much wrong here that it it, it does. I get obsessed about things. I, I mean, just in no particular order. The bra, obviously, is horrendous. I'm sorry. I don't normally talk about this, but look at her hips area. Like, you can... I, am I seeing underwear lines? Is that what's going on? It's a lot going on there. There's like fabric coming out of her belly button. I don't know. It's like boat necked all the hell. And if you're broad shoulders, I don't think that's the look you want to go for. I just, it looks like it was caught in an elevator. Nothing makes sense. The sleeves are messy. It's wrinkled. Sorry, you asked my opinion. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, no, it's, I agree completely. It is. The, the part about it that always I just focus in on is, the bra area, the bust area is just yeah. in no situation would you want this to be happening. And the fact that it's so overly visible, it's a very easy fix, but clearly she has either the wrong size bra and completely that's too tight, which is likely the case, or she po potentially has some sort of a padded situation that's just not a good fit and it's creating some lift away from her skin, making it even more obvious that the bra is ill-fitting. But no matter any of that, she needed to just simply wear a smoothing undergarment and a correct bra here because like you pointed out, by the hip area, it does look all lumpy, bumpy. The dress is clearly a little bit too tight because you can see it sort of struggling in many places the fabric is pulling and too tight and taut but then especially around the hip area something is off and yeah it could be a panty line but you know what fixes that shapewear slips uh -huh. undergarments they don't she's know her yeah she's not friends with her, with any of those things but the color i think is wrong and i love i personally love gray so it's weird for me to say this but i hate this color i don't think it works on this dress i don't the fabric's wrong. Even look above the bra. There's like a line across the top. What is that? I think that's part of it being too tight. The fabric is too tight. It's stretching and pulling. And yeah, I agree. The boat neck isn't a, a really great option for her. It does accentuate the the width of her shoulders overall. And, and it also just draws the eye up there. And you don't necessarily want the eye resting up there in an area that you're like maybe... A little bit less balanced than other places I guess sure. is the polite yeah. way to put it but you know I also am not a huge fan of this color having this cascading panel down the front because it no. so reminds me of like maybe a napkin or something yeah. like a cloth napkin I don't know what do you yeah. think about that a uh, panel in I, the front I think you're much nicer than me she looks like hell this is horrible <laughs> What is happening here? No, it really, no. Okay, so this is when she was obviously still with the royal family. So she literally had access to every tailor, every every undergarment specialist ever. And this is what you come up with? Really? Going back to, I'm obsessed with the bra. If she'd worn a traditional bra or whatever it is, you know, just not the strapless. She just pulled the straps just a little bit to the sides, maybe where the seams yeah. are. So that way they're not showing, but not this. I don't know. First possible choice. I don't understand. Yeah, yeah no, there was a, a ton of other things she could have done. Because especially with like, like you said, you have stylists available. She just didn't take the time or the effort. And the handbag is just way too huge for this. I mean, I think they were like meeting people or something and shaking some hands. She didn't need a briefcase of a handbag. What is that? No. No, you're exactly right. But we've seen her do this more recently when she's been doing all her parking lot walks. One of my favorite things to talk about. I'll go on for hours about that. This Remember when the Dior rumor was happening and she was doing her parking lot walk in the striped sweater? Wearing something very similar. And it looks like, again, I'm a business lady. Take me seriously. <laughs> you know, it's like a briefcase. What's happening? The humongous handbag is horrible for this outfit on top of everything else. She wore one, do you remember that she wore one kind of similar that was blue, but it was short, um, sleeveless and blue, oh, and yes. it had a panel oh. too. I feel like the panel yeah. worked better on that one than it does in the gray. I think the, gr the lightness of the fabric, it just shows all the flaws and it, it becomes, I keep saying it, like an arrow pointing to her <laughs> belly button. I don't One of the roughest, just like, rough around the edges type of look with that bra showing with the 
weird lumps and, and seams just everywhere and then clunky, clunky accessories. You're so right. The whole dress is clunky and can, the sleeves, it's not just that it's wrinkled. It's the, the, it's like they don't hit in the right spot. And then the opening, it just, the whole thing looks bizarre to me. It does. Yeah. It's even more awkward. It looks crazy. So I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you, how would you, is there a way to fix this dress or do you just throw it away and start over? No, because it's too tight. Once something's too tight, there's not a lot you can do about it. If she would have worn like two layers of shapewear and slips underneath, she might have been able to get away with it if she had the right size bra. But honestly, the fact that it's so tight, even in her skinny arms, it seems too tight. So True. always better to buy a little big and have a tailor take it in than buy too tight. Just, even if you mess up and, and they sent her the wrong size or she told them the wrong size, whatever happened... Aren't you trying this stuff on beforehand and y you see yourself in the mirror and, and you think, okay, I'm good. What, what mirror do you own? I mean, some theories are that she's a little bit, um, I don't know if this is the right word to use, but like exhibitionist in that she really enjoys showing skin or showing bra lines and a little bit of undergarment, even. like being visible through or like the... Uh, outfit we talked about on your sh channel where she had it unbuttoned too far so yeah. you know trying to show something revealing all of the time or just even things that are too tight end up being revealing by proxy because mm -hmm. there's no hiding anything every single line and seam can be seen that maybe she just thinks that that's attractive but it certainly isn't and the base oh. that she should have been after is women she should have been trying to win over the women in which case sure. You don't want to be dressing in this sort of a manner where you're making all these mistakes that we have also dealt with or made and don't like. Sure. She wasn't and, really and, playing to her audience, so to speak, very well either. The other thing that just strikes me over the head is, okay, she's known for spending exorbitant amounts on these outfits and then cheapens them. That's so true. It does. It, it definitely takes... It down a few notches the more and more mistakes that you make and the worse that the outfit itself looks the less it matters how much it costs because it doesn't look good so who really cares exactly. at that point yeah okay moving on to one of these dresses that is I think it's one of your least favorite but it's also yeah. one of the biggest like etiquette mistakes when it comes to dressing appropriately for an occasion that I can think of there's a few there's many with Megan but it's this horribly tight dress she wore while pregnant to a nursing home in December. And this is so inappropriate. What do you have to say about it? I want to hear it. Oh God, where do I start? Do you have 14 hours? Cause I could talk to you about this thing. Um, yeah, December in a nursing home. Uh, it's from Brock collection, $1,480 in case you guys want to run out and buy some. Um, can I, I don't even mean to like, there's just so much to go over with this dress. I'll get to it. But can I just show you too? She was wearing a gray coat with this black and white dress and she wore taupe shoes. What do you do with that? Oh my goodness. But, um, but okay. Yeah. Sorry. Dress. Uh, every single thing you can get wrong. She got wrong on this thing. Fit, uh, cut. And I don't hate the cut is oh, I hate this dress. The idea of a square neck or whatever that's called. Uh, during the summer, you have different neckline. I hate this dress so much. Would you ever, I don't, but even if it was summer, I wouldn't wear this dress to a nursing home. I just wouldn't, I, I don't understand it, but, um, the cut is all wrong. The color, come on, what are we doing here? The print, this is not a winter fabric. This is not a winter dress help what's going on <laughs> send help it's so true what you pointed out with with the print because that's something that stands out that you don't necessarily pick up on at first a lot of people don't but when a print is like really floral like this and these sorts of colors and whatnot it doesn't read winter look it doesn't at all those pattern changes do impact whether it's fitting for the season or not and that's a really good point i just oh oh god i'm stuck on this dress the slit again that's so much going on. Um, <laughs> the gathering, the bunching because of the tightness. I mean, the back. Can we spend about 14 hours talking about the back of this thing? The, 
I don't normally talk like this, but the back fat, what's going on? Like, what? just it's the wrong fit. And, and whatever you believe is happening under the dress, what I really think is she was trying to point at, this is a, her way of playing, look at me. Something I say a lot on my channel is just like, look at me, look at my bump, my bump, my bump, my bump, you know? So I'm going to make sure they photograph my bump and see my bump by wearing a dress that's four times too small for me. I am not confident that it's a maternity piece at all. I don't think so because typically you want the fabric to give, especially in the, you know, bust and belly area, everywhere, the hips, all that, but mm, no, no, no. It looks so tight that it would be so uncomfortable and difficult to get into. It looks like one of those dresses that you would have to like suck it in and get your, you know, somebody to help yank the zipper up with all their might. It just looks so aggressively tight. And then that's creating all this bunching and all this wrinkling everywhere simply because it's too tight but even if it Absolutely. weren't too tight as you said a nursing home yeah middle of winter Absolutely. it's just oh God, all of it is so bad but the way it's cut is just again if we're going broad shoulder i don't think it's flattering any of it i think this is actually worse than a boat neck because it's like you've got these big poofy sleeves just way off stuck on the side that look almost like they've just been attached as an afterthought. And yeah. and then it's just really widening in a much more aggressive manner than you would want. And you know, the square across the neckline isn't necessarily the best for her either. Bringing in some roundness or a V-neck can give you that elongation that a square neckline gives without widening anything either. But it's just one of so many so many outfits that just don't fit proper etiquette protocol for a situation because when you're going to a nursing home you're being around these elderly folks who some of them are in wheelchairs and stuff you don't want to wear something super duper tight no right. matter what it is even if it's pants you don't yeah. want to wear something super duper tight her agenda when she woke up that morning was like you said it's time to show this bump and mm -hmm. as square as it looks in this picture that's what she was after <laughs> so yeah. that's what she wore and these Poor dear old folks who were, were, you know, deserved some time for chat and some respect to be shown had to look at this all day. <laughs> and you think, you know, bringing a photographer with you, you're aware that you're going to have every angle photoed. I don't understand. She had to have known how tight the back was. You'd have to feel that pressing against your skin. I, I can't make sense of this. I really can't. Yeah. And it's, I mean, I'm sorry. I'm looking closely at the back <laughs> here and thinking... I mean, you're going to be able to see like underwear lines and stuff. It's it's simply too tight. You really don't need back fat. It's not going to make it more interesting. It's not going to look good. It's always going to look yeah. bad and give away just how tight this is. And then yeah, the coat she paired with it was really... It was really bad, right? Yeah. It was mismatched and she kept... That was the start. Was that the dawn of the coat flicking? coat flip i think so. it was one of the highlights of coat flip which is another etiquette fail you know if you're talking to somebody stop touching your clothing or your body or your face stop doing that because then they're going to be like what's going on do you need help why are what's happening did, did button fall off or something why do you keep touching your coat it's her way of playing look at me look at me you're much nicer than me so on my channel i just go for it and i say i'm pretty sure this is a moon bump to me that's what it reads you don't have to answer it's just my opinion I think it is. And so I really think she's like, look at my belly and just like sticking it out there. And that's where the coat flip came from. And that's why this is 10 times too tight. But even so, let's take all that aside. Just when you feel that the fabric is just not comfortable when you're sitting down or moving, I don't understand this. Yeah, no, it doesn't make any sense. And yeah, I mean, these are the types of moments or actions that she did and like clothing choices that she did that have spurred the surrogacy rumors onward. And I mean, the fact that they won't dispel them, tr you know, directly. I mean, I understand completely why people are on the fence about it. And, you know, it this especially does look suspicious. That's the most square. Looks totally square. Yes, it just, it's the whole thing. That's what struck me with these photos too, is what's going on? You guys have to leave it in the comments what you think, because yeah. 
This dress is one that very much makes a case for why people are suspicious and why people should be understanding to the suspicion because some people get mad about it, but it's like, you know, yeah. this type of thing that you can't really explain in, in, in other ways is what yeah. fuels yeah. this whole issue. But to the dress itself, it's horrible. I hate it. I don't understand. I, I keep saying I don't understand her mirrors. She must have a magic mirror or something because... I, I always say on my channel, I have the opposite affliction of her. When I see myself, I think, oh, what am I wearing? You know, <laughs> whereas she just sees anything on herself and goes, oh, I look great. No, it's a travesty all around. And if you want to see more travesties, be sure to go back and watch part one up on Jen's channel now. OK, so next up, we have this black coat dress, which made worse on the list in part because of what she paired it with. But we'll get into the rest in a minute. But what do you think of this first look here? Goodness. So on my channel, I have a thing that I talk about this hat and I call it her photoshopped hat because it's it's just placed weird on her head. It seems too small. And all I can think of is one of those spinner hats that's like rainbow colored that people wear on their heads. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> run, run out and buy you one. Why don't you? <laughs> uh, yeah, this was from Remembrance Day 2018. She was with the German First Lady. Um, she was actually mad this day. And that's why you see that in a lot of her photos is because of her placement. Because she was on a different balcony than Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth, Catherine, and Camilla. She was on a different balcony with uh, the German first lady, like I mentioned. So she was pissed. And so you can see the tight jaw and the pissed look. <laughs> I'd be pissed if I was wearing that spinner hat. Now, the following year, 2019, is when she cosplays Diana in that giant black hat and the belt real high and stuff. So, yeah, I get really into the history of this. But yeah, this is uh, her spinner photoshopped hat. I do vaguely remember reading an article about that. And it totally tracks that that would upset her and make her mad because she wants to be the center and she wants to work her way closer and closer to, you know, either Prince William, as we We've seen with the goo goo eyes all the time and or you know be right front and center now, this hat does indeed look photoshopped now that I look at it it does indeed look that way what I'm always drawn to is these so horribly designed sleeve situation the shoulders have like a shoulder cap sleeve over the shoulder and then the long sleeve underneath now growing up when it was cold in the winters we would often just wear like a long sleeve shirt under our short sleeve shirts and that's all that it reminds me of. And it looks janky. It looks not good. I do not like it. And it's worse for her body type, too, because it just widens and draws attention to that upper body and those shoulders. Such a good point. I didn't even think about that. It does, It looks like long sleeve shirt under a short sleeve shirt. <laughs> this is a Givenchy coat. So you definitely wouldn't want that sort of a vibe of like, yeah, I just popped a long sleeve shirt on underneath this coat. It just looks that way. So I'm a little bit confused why they designed it that way to begin with, but I'm even more confused why Meghan Markle would choose it given the fact that it just enhances and will throw off her balance even more by drawing those shoulders even wider visually. Adding any sort of visual bulk to the shoulder area like this is just going to make them look bigger and be more of a focal point. Plus she's got her angry face on here. Somebody's mad. You're so right. I'm so glad you brought this up. Again, she must really be into her shoulders. You would think somebody with broad shoulders would be very aware of, hey, probably won't, don't want extra details pointing to my shoulders. It's called a capelet coat or caplet coat. I'm not sure. But I think it's just the worst idea you could have for a coat like this. It's it's terrible. So then the next time we saw her in this coat was when she was on an engagement on her own and she had her baby bump at the time and she wore this pleated handkerchief hem skirt, which you guys know I'm very anti-handkerchief hems because they just look messy, but especially messy when they're hanging out of this same Givenchy coat. So they're just kind of dangling erratically from beneath this coat. But the worst part of the outfit might be the fact that she has what looks to be a pretty standard t-shirt or maybe long sleeve shirt on over the top that's just sort of hanging off of the bump with the pleated skirt coming in underneath. It just looks so ill thought out, so messy, so not well put together. On top of it, her hair doesn't look that great with this overall outfit it doesn't really flow very nicely it's paired up with nude shoes it's the worst what do you have to say you are so right it's it all of it in the picture i'm looking at 
her she's kind of raising her arms a little bit so it almost looks like um bat wings or something i don't it looks like wings it's just it's definitely or shoulder pads maybe the nude heels i don't understand you're absolutely right and and purposely button just the top button so it'll hang and be like a look at look at me none of it works it doesn't make any sense I talked about it in my video i'll talk about it here again the hair is pulled way too tight. It's, I mean, and that's the least offensive part of this outfit, but I'm just, I'm just pointing it out. I don't, I, I'm not a fan of any of this. I think because it is a, almost a harsh look on the coat, the harsh hair, it's just, it's too much going on. I, I'm not a fan. It's true. She should have done half up and down. I always say like half up, I think would look better on her because she always has the hair like way in the face and it's like well maybe if yes. she did half up i think my instinct is that she could still have her hair down but it would be away from her face i think that's why i always yes. think half up would work but half up would work for this but yes the shoulders they are they're just poofing up here this poorly designed coat i i'm confused something like Givenchy should be impeccable but maybe it's because her shoulders are a little too wide so then it's sort of puckering up and not fitting her exactly right. Maybe that's part of the problem. But yeah, when you've got nude shoes and an all black outfit, I'm sorry, you're just not doing it right. Think about it, you're right, it's what it is. I think the fit isn't exactly right. It's not impeccable. And so when she does do anything with her arms, it just immediately flares up and it's a volume you don't want in that area. <laughs> yes, like this floppy hands picture. It's just like, let's make the shoulders up a little higher and wider. Let's just go ahead and really bulk them up as much as possible. Floppy yeah. hands, handkerchief hem. There's nothing uh, about this outfit that I can say is okay. None of it. But the skirt we then saw worn as what I think is a dress. So I had to get Jen's opinion on it because I think she wore this skirt as a dress on this day in Morocco. What do you think? I think you are a genius. So I have seen this outfit before, but I've never really zoomed in. And now that you've pointed out, you're right. That's what she did. And I never noticed this before. She turned a dress or sorry, a skirt into a dress. And it looks even crazier. I, I'm really zooming in now and looking the fit. Yeah, absolutely. It's just straight across. It is a skirt. You're so spot on. Yeah, I think uh, that this is something that we all tried when we were playing dress up when we were children. And that's where that stayed. That did not become a thing that you bring with into your adulthood wardrobe choices, particularly for professional events. None of us. Leave it in the comments if you've ever done this as a grown up. So spot I just can't even believe I missed this. And you're brilliant for finding for finding this and figuring this out you're right that's all i see now because i'm telling you even across the top the fit is it's a skirt it's folding in on itself i don't know how to explain it but yeah you're right that's exactly what it is and it looks even worse with a weird white blazer on top that matches yeah. nothing else in the outfit too if she had done a black blazer it might have camouflaged the fact that it was this skirt a little bit was anybody else if this was my neighbor, whatever, or whatever, I would think, oh, well, that makes sense. I'm not saying do that with a skirt, but I'm saying <laughs> we don't have the disposable income to just blow three grand on a skirt, you know, whatever it was. Um, or, you know, maybe if you don't have the, the means, you just repurpose something when you're pregnant because you don't know what else to wear. I would almost excuse it. There is no reason. There's no excuse. This is horrible. Even if we're wrong, even if this is just a dress, this is a really bad dress because it's cut stupid and it hangs stupid. And it's not good. The fit of the white blazer does, it can't fit right because of the shape of the skirt dress. Yeah, because if, if it is a dress, like you said, yeah, maybe uh -huh. it is. Okay, fair. Uh -huh. Maybe it is. And if it is, then yes, it's horrible. It has way too much fabric and way too much room around the knees and the thighs there. It's just hanging off of the baby bump situation. And it's doing a lot of asymmetrical weird stuff. So it's a really poor choice to wear as a maternity dress, but it's an even poorer choice to wear for these types of engagements. And I mean, black and white automatically will look a little out of place in a casual sort of situation next to Harry in this outfit. It looks like they're not going for like a dinner situation or some sort of reception. They're doing some sort of engagement where they're meeting people. They're doing a meet and greet type thing or a walkabout. So it's a bad choice of outfit for that purpose as well. You're right. Oh, just at a base level, I hate everything about it. It. I hate it with the white and I hate the big dumb earrings and I love a big bold earring 
not these would this uh, there's something about it i think something more delicate would have made more sense here yes yeah because the blazer is more harsh so i mean like something that was like just post earrings you know uh -huh. that wasn't dangly would have been fine if it was like a yeah. bolder chunkier look but these chunky ones hanging down with the blazer right there just yeah it doesn't work because especially too because the pleated top is so busy so there's one more thing i have to say before we let this go which is I'm not giving Harry a pass. Look how crazy he looks, too. He he is a wrinkled mess here. I don't know if he's given up, too, because she's given up. I don't know. I want to say I'm equal opportunist here. He looks very disheveled, and there's no reason for it. It's true. I often wonder if they get into arguments before they go out to these events, and then they have to rush to get ready because they spent so much time arguing. Because they also sometimes seem a little bit, like, icy in their expressions. All right, so on to the last outfit for today. This is one of the worst dresses that either of us have ever seen for the occasion. So much of this was disappointing. We are talking about Meghan Markle's wedding dress. The big letdown that we all felt when we saw her get out with this. This particular dress, when you could have had anything as extravagant or beautiful or fabulous as you want, she chose this. I think you just took the words out of my mouth. She had everything at her fingertips she could have chosen from. She could have had 100,000 people working on this thing. And this is where we landed. It's wrinkled. It's messy. It's, uh, of course, Givenchy. And uh, the reason that's a big deal is because she chose a French designer, whereas traditionally they go for somebody out of the United Kingdom. So that was kind of a slap in the face or seen as a slap in the face. Um, this dress cost $265,000. I have so many thoughts on this. I definitely, I'll let you go, but oh gosh, it's just everything that they could do wrong on this thing. They did. I am not a fan, but, um, I just feel like it's just so wrong. And, and I've heard so many stories that I'm sure you have too, that she was a nightmare to work with and was very much a know-it-all and didn't want to do the fittings. And that's why we got this. And then I believe she had maybe lost a little weight beforehand, which I ha it happens when you get married. But my goodness, everything that could go wrong with this dress did. Now, are you familiar with Princess Angela of Liechtenstein? She got it so beautifully right. Beautiful dress. I think the what hit home was the elegance and the simpleness, but it was so perfectly fit and tailored. She looked gorgeous. And people believe Megan was going for for that look, when you go this simple, you have to have, and you can explain it better than me, you have to be impeccably tailored and fit, and then it shines through. The she missed it. She missed it bad. What do you think of her wearing white? I had read that the queen didn't necessarily think she should wear white and that a lot of people found that to be kind of a big deal, but then some people were in the camp of, hey, you know, it's modern times now what does it matter if she chooses white dress what's your position on that what do you think i've talked about the same thing i've heard the same thing and my honest position is i love her majesty the queen so if the queen told me to wear a pile of poop on my head i'm wearing a pile of poop on my head if the queen told me you're not wearing white i'm not wearing white i just think it's a respect thing and i think she has a point we're not I understand that it's modern times but she didn't get married in a modern setting she's Enrich I mean, she's surrounded by history, regardless of how you feel about her or her stupid husband. So, so my thought is if the queen tells you, hey, maybe you don't want to wear white, then hey, maybe you don't want to wear white. And even, it, even ignoring all that, let's just say, you know, it's her day. She gets to wear what she wants. Fine. I don't think this was the right shade. I don't. I don't think it looked good on her. I, not just, I mean, the cut was horrendous, but the, I don't, love the ultra white. I just don't. I think that something different would have been much more beautiful. Something that maybe had a little bit of ivory or white in it somehow, but had some sort of color. Like, I mean, some ladies have done ones that have the white skirt or white tulle, but then have some sort of like champagne or blush or ivory top going on. Maybe she could have done something like that if she was really stuck on white. Since it was in a church and it was a church wedding, 
you should respect those sorts of rules. That's where you would maybe follow some of those traditions. I've heard a lot of rumblings that the queen wanted them to have a smaller wedding. I feel like it was just, I mean, if, if the stories are true, then it was just a vindictive move on her part. Just yeah. anything to be contrary, I think, at that point. Uh, I'm thinking about Catherine. You know, I love Catherine so much, and mm -hmm. I know you do too, uh, Princess of Wales. But think about, okay, so she had this beautiful white dress as well. I think the difference there is there was, um, it was lace. There was detail. It was beautifully fit to her. And I think, again, when you go this simple with no detail to this dress, it better be perfect. Yeah. It better be, and it's not. And so that points to everything wrong with it, including the color. I, I think one thing that I thought was just fine or possibly even good, dare I say, was the length of the sleeve. And I know some people really don't like it, but she has such lanky limbs and at this point was so thin that if she had something that showed her arms completely like a strapless or, you know, like something that was sleeveless, it would have looked really, really weird. And... Okay with full length sleeves, it still would have kind of drawn attention to just how long her arms are. So by doing that three quarter or, you know, somewhat mid length sleeve, I thought was a good choice for proportions. But yeah, the rest of it was just awful. I think that going for the boat neck type situation robbed her of the chance to have something more soft and interesting um, and some detail closer up to her face. Of course, you look at the whole dress, but still, I think that it's important to have something soft and beautiful near your face when you're getting married. And it was just this harsh, harsh start line across here that also showed a tiny bit of shoulder like she became determined to show some shoulder or something yes. which was requested that she not do in the facility so Correct. it felt a little bit like a silly uh, cut off your nose to spite in spite of your face type situation of like well right. you're gonna lose any attempt of softness and more flattering for her figure with her broader shoulders by just oh well i'm gonna go for a boat neck so i can show some shoulder somehow and by doing that boat neck Again, you're you're getting a square silhouette. And also, is it just me or can you not see her bra on this thing again? What is with the undergarments? No, I think you can. And I think that it also made her bust look strange. Like, I think it was you who said east-west. It does. Yes. It looks odd. And it looks ill-fitting in so many places. There's also a little extra room, like in the armpit area, like that yes. area didn't get tailored properly, which would happen if you wear something, for example, padded for your fitting, but then not yes. for the event, which is weird. Like, right. why do you care if the tailor thinks you have a different cup size than you really do? It makes no sense to me. You're absolutely right. It, it just makes no sense. Uh, when researching this, According to articles online, she had eight fittings for this thing. I don't believe it. How do you do that in eight fittings? I, I'm i thinking they mistyped and meant to write she had a fitting for eight minutes. It would make perfect sense that she just was being too overboard, that she was being rude to the seamstresses and the tailors, or that she was constantly making changes and demands, which you mentioned a lot of the press at the time was pointing out that she was changing lots of things. I've heard a theory, I wonder what you think, that she had two dresses and this was a surprise type situation. She had a different dress that the queen had approved and then this was one that she suddenly wore that day last minute is something that I have heard several people mention in the comments before when I went over everybody's wedding dress. Have you heard that? I have not, but you're brilliant. <laughs> no, I really have not heard that. And that all of a sudden it's like, ding, that makes sense with everything we know about her. She would do something like that. So wow. No, I have not heard that, but I yeah. love this theory and that would make so much sense. It to me almost looked like uh, the fabric that you use when you're planning a dress. It looks like the fabric that you put up on a mannequin when you're gonna build on top of it and make your dress out of it. It almost looked like that to me, like something just very unfinished about it. And then on top of it, the veil doesn't match it in its vibe. There's nothing tying the veil to the dress at all because the dress has no soft dainty details the way Correct. the veil is just uh -huh. so long too it's ridiculous yeah. 
So I always understood the veil to be the middle finger to the to the queen, basically, because um, she had. I, that's the part I had heard that she had said that. You, why do you even? I think like why do you need a veil? Or maybe why do you need one that length? And so she added that's, more length to it, and that's uh, how we ended up. If if you know, even if you take pieces of these stories, even if they're kind of true or parts of it are true, that is so ridiculous. As a whatever forty uh, something now, however old she was when she got married, thirty something year old woman, are you really that childish that you need to act like that? It's absolutely yeah. ridiculous. You know what? I gotta gotta point out, you are so smart because you you nailed it. She's cutting off her nose to spite her face, and the only one that's suffering here is her because she looks ridiculous. I can't see anybody who's getting married like today, five years ago, in the future. Being like, oh, I want to wear a dress that's exactly like that. But I can see yeah. literally so many thousands, millions of people wanting a dress that looks just like Catherine's. Catherine, and that's, that's, that's the difference. That's what you get when you listen to people and collaborate with people. Then yeah. editing takes place and people feel comfortable letting you know how you actually look or what would actually be more flattering. And you listen to it and you try it and you're not pretentious about it then you end up with a really spectacular result the way Catherine did. But when you're not taking in any of that input or people don't feel comfortable telling it to you because you're rude or you're just not very nice. So they're like, why do I care what she looks like? You don't collaborate. You end up with this where it's like, so it, it reminds me of what you would get if you were working with somebody really stubborn. Absolutely right. And somebody that's a know-it-all. If she yeah. thinks she knows the best, then you're going to end up with crap like this. Yeah. Even if it just had like a lace border around this top section and was relatively the same everywhere else, it would have been a thousand times better than this where yeah. there's just nothing tying the veil and the, and the gown together and there's nothing softening yeah. it. So much of her figure can be very angular at times and, uh -huh. and sharp sort of. So bringing in some softness in some way, shape or form really benefits her. I just remember the sense of disappointment, like you said, because I just, I th I'd, I I still had hope at this point. And I thought, oh, I want to see a beautiful dress, you know? Yes, me too. Oh, gosh, nothing could prepare me for this mess. The biggest letdown. I had people say they just switched the TV off the second they saw the dress because they were like, what's the point of watching this napkin walk down the aisle? It's just ridiculous. There's nothing here to be excited about. I have a question for you. Uh, we hadn't, we didn't just pre-plan this. I'm just curious. I hate the wedding dress so much, but you know what? There's very few outfits of Megan's that I actually like, but I will tell you that second, that reception dress, I liked it. Did you like it? I actually didn't mind it too awful much. I did think it was a little too heavy on the shoulders because when she, oh, yeah. in the pictures, you know, it's very much just shoulders, but the yeah. rest of the dress had enough softness in its flow and fabric and it did flare out enough at the bottom that it looked more balanced from a distance silhouette overall. You know what I mean? Looking yes. at the whole dress from tip to toe, it does balance with her shoulders in its volume very nicely. So I think that it was okay. It was one of the few instances where I think the halter top situation worked out all right for her. But other yeah. times that she's done a halter top, there's not a correct balance happening anywhere else. So it doesn't really work the same. I agree. I agree. I on her, the shoulders, I get it. But just the dress, it's one of the very few. It's one of the only ones of hers that she's worn where I'm like, okay, I like that dress. It nice. did look beautiful and it looked flowy and light in its texture. It just looked beautiful. It really did. Back to this dress. No, I hate it. Make it stop. Go away. <laughs> I was like sitting here thinking, how could you fix this dress? The fit, obviously. If Do you think if there was like any attachment of like... I don't know, some sort of detail. I don't even know where you'd stick it. Like <laughs> I, I just a little bit of something like, um, I don't know if bling would cheapen it. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Like I wouldn't think that like adding sparkle to the dress would work very well because you got the TR. You want that to be what draws the sparkle right. for the look. Yeah. But I think something softer in the dress was needed. It needed yeah. some sort of lace or tulle exposed wow. somewhere. Or if the yeah. skirt had more volume to it and, you know, 
was a little bit more A-line or princess style, like not too voluminous, but enough that it balances out the shoulders a little bit better would have helped because then it would have created more balance to her overall figure. And uh -huh. if you had some sort of softness, like I said, like perhaps like lace across the top area instead of just the boat neck all severe, it would have helped to tie the veil in more as well. So I definitely think if they would have added or adjusted the skirt a little bit, added a little something, it could have been okay. But the way it is here, it's just so severe. Even if it were perfectly fitted, it still would have looked very much like a plain napkin dress just straight across here, no softness. It still would have had all that contrast that didn't really play into bridal as well. Then the smug pictures in the carriage, oh. That day was a mess. She slapped somebody's hand away from her dress. So, you know, she dropped Doria off before the church because she didn't want attention on anybody else but her. Leave in the comments what you think about this wedding dress disaster. Way to take one of the most special days and totally blow it with your outfit. I mean, this is just a tragedy all around, but be sure to go subscribe to Jen's channel and check out the video there. It's Real Housewives Recaps. She's hilarious. She has a great channel over there. It's so much fun. I absolutely love it. So thank you so much for being here with me today. Well, I appreciate that so much. And thank you for having me. This is a blast. And I'm sorry to tell you, I am now upset. I mean, I've been, been obsessed with your channels, but I'm coming on a lot because I really enjoyed chatting with you. You were so much fun. Thank you. I had so much fun. It was a lovely chat, a wonderful way to spend the day. Thank you so much for being here with me, everybody, and a special thanks to Jen. If you have not gone and checked her channel out yet, then be sure to do so. It's Real Housewives Recaps here on YouTube. And for links for anything that I use to get ready or anything that I'm wearing today, be sure to check the products tab. And the link to the video that I did with Jen is going to be in the description box as well. Thank you so much again, everybody. I hope you have a happy day ahead, and I will see you next time. Bye!